Welcome back to Tony's tutorial and today I have very good news for you that is we are starting a new venture in this channel that is from anatomy and biomechanics we are taking forward our discussion to the neuroanatomy sessions yes today on bus we are starting neuroanatomy neuroanatomy is one of the most beautiful and challenging subject to learn provided you have that passion and interest to learn. We try to create that interest and passion to learn neuroanatomy and make it the most simplified version so that you as a student or a professional can get the best out of this. So if you are a student who looks to forward to improve your knowledge or study for the first time, or if you are a professional who try to refresh your knowledge, this is the correct venue. And here, we try to explore neuroanatomy today onwards on every alternate days. Yes, as I told you, neuroanatomy is a very beautiful subject to learn and it's one of my favorite subjects. As I have a tip for you to learn the neuroanatomy and master it, that is if you wish to learn some subject, uh, try to love that subject to the maximum you can. When you try to love the subject, uh, it becomes not your necessity but becomes your passion to learn. And if you develop that passion to learn, everything seems to be simple. Even the complex part seems to be simple. So try to develop a passion for learning neuroanatomy with the Tony's tutorial, right? Let us explore to the neuroanatomy and now to the nervous system. In this video, we are having a very brief introduction into the neuroanatomy. Next session onwards, we will focus on most complicated thing. These building blocks, these foundations are very important for you to understand the upcoming advanced knowledge in the neuro sessions so what do you mean by nervous system you know what is nervous system you know that we have central nervous system we have peripheral nervous system what is the function of nervous system what is nervous system what includes in nervous system you know about digestive you know about endocrine you know about reproductive system and so on so simply if we tell Nervous system collects information from outside, collects information from the surroundings, collects information from the body and uh, transfer that information to some part which is the central processing unit like in a computer we have central processing unit transmit that information to the and from the that has been processed that has been integrated and some results are being brought out. So this beautiful function of collecting the information, transmitting that information to that central unit and from that unit processing that information, integrating that information and finally the unit is giving right some results. For example, if you search in Google some a picture of a flower, that input is being carried over by various networks into the central processing unit where various informations about that flowers have been collected and integrated and processed and finally you get the picture that you are looking for for example a rose flower similar to that that is the one of the basic function of your nervous system and of course that nervous system is made up of two units that is a central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system all of you might have heard about this a lot but we need to have a very clear picture of this form moving forward. The central nervous system is again built up of, you know, what is that? The very simple brain and the spinal cord, right? Brain and the spinal cord, good? The brain and the spinal cord. Whereas peripheral nervous system is made up of cranial nerves, cranial nerves and spinal nerves cranial nerves and the spinal nerves right let us explore what is that so you have a center thing known as nervous system for example you imagine you have a tree over here right you have a tree over here okay the branches of the tree are here like this okay now the central part of this tree the central part of your nervous system is your brain and spinal cord is your brain and spinal cord which occupies the central part of your brain 
nervous system. For example, in our body, this trunk is the center, head and trunk is the center. So that center part is your center nervous system. You can consider it. And your limbs, upper limbs and lower limbs, especially like the, the roots of the tree and the branches of the tree, which comes out from different parts, are the peripheral nervous system. So the central part, the center most thing is known as the brain plus the spinal cord. The brain and the spinal cord. Of course, you have something like this. You have your brain here, then you have some structures over here, and from here you have your spinal cord. This is the center nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord together. And there are some nerves, like the branches, that arises from the brain, known as the cranial nerves. And some brains arises from the spinal cord, that is the spinal nerves. This together forms the peripheral nervous system. So that together forms the peripheral nervous system. So the earlier function we saw, collection of the information is done by your peripheral nervous system. So your peripheral nervous system, for example, when I'm holding this pen, your peripheral nerves collect this information and reaches it to the central processing part, that is our brain. And from brain, it has been processed. And uh, from the previous information that has been held in the brain, for example, I have, have held some pencils, pens, etc. I need to distinguish this. So that information has been processed, diagnosed or uh, integrated together. And finally, I get a response. Right? I get a response. That is through your peripheral nervous system. So the processing is done by brain and the spinal cord. Integration, processing, coordination. At the same time, informations are carried to the brain and from the brain to the periphery by your peripheral nervous system. There is something. Information are carried to the brain. The informations are carried to the brain, to the brain. For example, if you have the brain, information are carried to the brain and brain process it and information are carried out right that means there are two different type of components in the peripheral nervous system one is the afferent component afferent fibers or afferent nerves afferent fibers which carries the information to the brain and there is another component known as efferent fibers or efferent component what is that it carries the information from the brain. The brain has processed it. And finally, it carries it to the effector organs. What is the effector organ? It can be muscles. It can be organs. That is your efferent or fibers. How do you remember that? Um, efferent, E stands for effector organs. End. Okay? The end in which the information are being received. So you can remember it that way. So the peripheral nervous system contains of two components, which includes your afferent fibers, which carry information to the brain, and your efferent fibers, which carry information from the brain into the muscles or the peripheral parts of the body. So this is a beautiful picture of the nervous system, which is made up of central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system includes brain and the spinal cord. We have to study each and every one in detail. And peripheral nervous system includes cranial nerves and spinal nerves. Right? Cranial nerves and spinal nerves. Do you know how much our brain weighs? Our brain weighs about 1.5 kg. 1,500 grams. But can you feel that? No. That is because it is floating inside the cerebrospinal fluid, which makes it feel like as light as a 50 gram. So such complex and such systematic is the function inside the brain. We will discover and we will explore each and every one of that in detail in the upcoming videos. Can we build one more block into this? Or can we add some more foundational knowledge to this? The cranial nerves, how many are there? You know that it is a 12 pairs of cranial nerves. How many spinal nerves are there? There are 31 pairs of spinal nerves. So the cranial nerves are 12 in number and spinal nerves are 31 in number. And we studied that there is afferent fibers and efferent fibers. This efferent or effect can be to your muscles, right? Or it can be to your heart, increasing the heart beat. It can be your to gastrointestinal tract, in increasing the gastrointestinal joint, gastrointestinal tract mobility, increasing the secretion of some gastric juice, pancreatic juice, etc. in the intestinal tract. 
So that can be a different function. So these efferent fibers are again subdivided into somatic nervous system. Somatic nervous system or peripheral nervous system can be divided into somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system. You know that autonomic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system. Somatic nervous system means soma, somatic it supplies the muscles. So our skeletal muscles have been supplied by this. So the information is reaching. For example, my brain sends that you need to flex your hand. That information is transmitted by your somatic nervous system. Afferent fibers are, it is afferent fibers. One among that is the somatic nervous system. And the other one is autonomic nervous system. The information like when I am running and my heartbeat has to be increased. When I have knee, greater need, my uh, respiratory rate has to be increased. My gas to intestine and mobility has to be increased. Such informations um, are processed by your autonomic nervous system. So the two components of peripheral nervous system includes somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Somatic nervous system is involved with your muscles, the skeletal muscles, information to the skeletal muscles. Autonomic nervous system is to the heart, internal organs, blood vessels, etc. Autonomic can again be divided into sympathetic and parasympathetic. You know that, right? I hope that all of you know that sympathetic and parasympathetic. So autonomic nervous system can be again subdivided into sympathetic and parasympathetic. This is a beautiful discussion, but we will cover it later. When we cover about peripheral nervous system, we will study. Right now we need a building block. That is a nervous system includes central and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system made up of brain and spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system made up of cranial nerves and spinal nerves. In fact, divided by uh, somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Autonomic again to be divided by sympathetic and parasympathetic. And we saw two types of fibers. One is afferent fibers and different. Always remember the difference between afferent and different fibers because we need it throughout our learn learning of neuroanatomy sessions. Right? Now let us expand our knowledge to understand which are the parts of brain. Now let us look into the parts of the brain. In fact, you know that the parts of the brain include forebrain, right? Then you have four after that you have the midbrain and then you have the hindbrain. Forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. Okay, right. Now, but this forebrain is also known by one another term. Do you know that? It is known by prosencephalon. This encephalon is uh, common to all the coming ones, right? But this pros, can you remember that you can know prototype uh, or pioneer, prototype model. What is that that comes before? So the one that stands friend is your forebrain. So the one that is at the top or one that is in the friend region, that is your forebrain. So forebrain is known by pro, prosencephalon. The forebrain is known as by the name prosencephalon right then you have the midbrain m for midbrain so we can call it mesencephalon right mesencephalon we have this common term encephalon over here you have to correlate m for m right and your hindbrain is known as rhombencephalon rhombencephalon how do you remember it r for rear 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 the back side so you can remember it as rear, R for rear. So that is the hindbrain. So how can you remember these three complicated terms? This includes prosencephalon, the pro, which is the forebrain. You have mesencephalon, M for the midbrain. You have R for the rhombencephalon. And this is your, and this is your forebrain. This region is your forebrain or prosencephalon. And this is your mesencephalon or the midbrain or midbrain. And this is your, what do you call, hindbrain or rhombencephalon. So you can correlate this and remember. So you can simply guess the forebrain, the centermost part is the mesencephalon or the midbrain and the posterior most part is the, or the backward, the posterior portion is the rhombencephalon or the hindbrain. Now, what includes in the forebrain? What are the structures inside the forebrain? What structures makes the forebrain? The forebrain or prosencephalon is again divided into two terms. Don't worry, we'll do it in a simple manner. That is the T encephalon. T 
steel encephalon always encephalon is common no need to worry about that and another is a diencephalon diencephalon right what do you mean by that okay you can simply guess it you have some structures over here which is behind or hidden by your cerebrum or the forebrain part right that teal encephalon includes your cerebrum that let me give you that first the teal encephalon includes your cerebrum so some structures are there which are deep inside the cerebrum or the teal encephalon that is your diencephalon so that is deep inside so we can call it as a deep structures so the term the name comes as diencephalon whereas this is the topmost section this is the topmost region so we call it as a top teal and saffron top one comes a teal and saffron deepest one comes the dye and saffron so the process uh, saffron is made up of teal and saffron and dye and saffron and teal and saffron includes your cerebrum and cerebral hemispheres you know that you have two cerebral cerebral hemispheres we we'll look into that later right details of that let us remember let us now build a foundation and dye and saffron includes the deep structures inside your brain and what are the structures inside your diencephalon? The structures that are in the diencephalon. It includes your thalamus and associated structures. Thalamus, hypothalamus, metathalamus, subthalamus and epithalamus. Everything thalamus is common. Just have to remember or make an abbreviation like this and you can remember. Of course, even if you don't remember that, you will study that in the coming sessions. So you just remember diencephalon is the deepest structures and include thalamus, subthalamus, epithalamus, metathalamus and hypothalamus. At least few among that. Right? Yes. So we studied this too. So mesencephalon includes the midbrain and it is made up of what structures? Your crest cerebri, your tegmentum, tectum substantia nigra so those are the sex structures which make up your midbrain which includes your crest cerebri even if you cannot remember this now no need to worry because once you learn and deep and deep you will remember this at, uh, at present just remember the structures belong to the midbrain crest cerebri substantia nigra tectum and tegmentum so these are the some structures in the midbrain session, right? Whereas your rhombencephalon, your rhombencephalon, what are the structures in the rhombencephalon? The rhombencephalon includes here you have your pons, which you might know now, you the medulla over here, and this structure is the cerebellum. So the rhombencephalon includes pons, medulla, and cerebellum. Pons, medulla and cerebellum. Cerebellum is often known as myelencephalon. Sorry, the medulla is often known as myelencephalon and pons and cerebellum is known as metencephalon, right? The pons and medulla is known as, so pons and the cerebellum is known as metencephalon and M for M, myelencephalon, that is a medulla oblongata. Medulla is known as the myelencephalon, right? Now, we have one more structure over here, which act as like a stem in the brain. For example, if you have a structure over here like this, you have some structures over here in the brain, which act as the stem of the brain, that we call brain stem. And that is made by your midbrain, pons and medulla. Midbrain, pons and medulla makes up your brainstem that is another structure that you must remember that is your brainstem which we might see at like a stem in the brain like we remember the tree similarly if you remember there is a stem inside the brain and these are the branches you can feel that this stem is made up of midbrain this midbrain forms medulla this together forms the brain stem and from here you have your spinal cord expanding now these are some basic concept into the neuroanatomy, some basic foundational knowledge that you must need in the neuroanatomy. And of course you know that the nervous system is made up of neurons. Nervous system is made up of neurons. And neurons are the building block or functional components of the nervous system. There are some cells known as the neuroglial cells which act as a supporting cells to the neurons. 
we will discover the neurons in detail later but we need to remember two more concepts in the brain which always we come across that is the gray matter and white matter what do you mean by gray matter and what is the white matter it's a simple concept but sometimes mostly it is confusing gray matter means cell body of neurons inside inside the brain the cell bodies of neurons inside the brain or central nervous system is known as your gray matter we know that a nerve is made up of something like dendrites and here you have the cell body and here you have axons so this cell body of the neurons are which are present in the brain are known as your gray matter brain and spinal cord is known as your gray matter right that is your gray matter how can you remember this for example you can remember this structure to be a balloon okay we have lot of balloons in the central nervous system we have lot of balloons over here okay and the threads in which we catch that is the balloons these are the tails of the balloon for this example you think that the cell bodies are this balloon the part if you have a cluster of the cell body inside the brain that structures in the central nervous system is making your gray matter and it's a tail this sort of structures the tails of the nerves together that forms neurons forms the white matter why is it white because it's mostly containing myelinated fibers and myelin sheath appears to be white in color one of the reasons for that so you want to understand what is gray matter what is white matter gray matters are the cell bodies of neurons inside nerves inside the central nervous system whereas the white matter they are the axons the extensions the tails in this balloons are the which one the white matter and they appear to be white because of the myelin sheath in them so these are some basic foundational knowledge in neuroanatomy in next section we will cover which are the coverings of the brain that is the meninges in detail until then stay tuned and if you like this video don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel let me know how far you enjoyed this video and if you find out informative and if you have any suggestion just pin me in the comment box